Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk. First on the docket, the scariest thing that I have seen during my entire time as a defense attorney. Second, the Fresno shooting case, which was closed, and now the video appears. And the next contestant for the Dumb Criminal of the Week. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk, and we have an important video today. I want to talk about the scariest thing that I have seen as during the entire time that I've been a criminal defense attorney, probably time as the entire time I've been an attorney. The scariest thing I think I possibly think of while I've been alive. And there was a survey done, and it states... 51% of Americans think the First Amendment is outdated and should be rewritten. 48% of the people believe that hate speech should be illegal. And even scarier, 80% of the people don't actually know what the First Amendment protects. Is that not terrifying? That is terrifying. That is the scariest thing that I could possibly think of. So, because we are technically an educational channel... Let's take a look at the First Amendment. For those of you who have your pocket constitution at home, feel free to read along. All right? The First Amendment to the Constitution of the United States. And for those who don't know this, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, also known as the Bill of Rights, were required before the states would ratify the Constitution. Why? The states, the government in the states, the people did not trust the federal government. Why? They just got done dealing with that king over there that could do whatever the hell he wanted. He was king. And they said, we're not going to do that. So the First Amendment, ladies and gentlemen, and they didn't put it first because they didn't think it was important. Think about it. Let's take a listen. Amendment 1. Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or the right of the people peacefully to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who do not know, the Constitution is the document that this country runs upon. It is the foundation to everything that takes place within our governmental structure. The first 10 amendments specifically prohibit what the government cannot do. The Bill of Rights. These are the rights that the people have. Congress, and it's applicable through the 14th Amendment to the states, so state legislators cannot come in and abridge your speech. They cannot pass laws to say, we're going to prohibit your speech. The mere fact that 51% of America thinks that the First Amendment is outdated? Are you kidding me? This is revolutionary. <laughs> this was revolutionary at the time. No one had ever put a prohibition on any type of leadership. I... I I don't know what to possibly say. 48% believe hate speech should be illegal. All right? Half of that number, people believe that jail time should be imposed with hate speech. Okay? Ladies and gentlemen, think about this. Okay? Now, First Amendment only prohibits the government from passing laws. So if the government said, we're going to pass a law that says you can't say anything that hurts someone else's feelings, okay, makes them feel bad, and you could go to jail as your punishment for that, would you really want to live in a country like that? I guess it would be a great thing if you were, in fact, the one who was making the rules as to what offended people, and you could paint the law as to what should happen to people if they are so offended. 
But what happens when somebody flips and says what you're saying is now offensive to them? See, when I went to college, part of the whole college experience was you were supposed to get exposed to different ideas, and being exposed to those different ideas, it would either A, reinforce what you knew because you had listened to the other side and said, yeah, that's just not um, intellectually honest or just doesn't make any sense, or you would listen to somebody and say, wow, that's interesting. Now, yes, are there always going to be people out there that want to spew hate speech? Yes. Is it disgusting? Yes. Should it be prohibited? No. Okay? You cannot regulate what people are going to think. If someone is a racist, you are not going to change their mind through legislation. It is going to be the same way. And if he's going to spew his vile thoughts to people, that's okay, because people can listen to that and say, that guy is ridiculous and he is a racist. You can't impose that. The First Amendment is there to protect that which is unpopular, okay? Just for example, to show you how it would be, we've talked about this, how YouTube demonetizes or limits our videos here, and everything that we talk about here is so generic, it could appear on the evening news. We, we're not offensive. We don't go into anything that should offend anybody. It's simply factual content and some analysis of that. It's pretty PG-13. Well, guess what? We put a video up last week of oral arguments before the United States Supreme Court. YouTube demonetized that and said that it was inappropriate for viewers. We challenged it, and they said after manual review, the United States Supreme Court, which is the most proper and most serious and refined courtrooms, not only in America, probably one of the, in the world, where nobody speaks over one another, uh, it is polite, they're respectful, they tell you what kind of clothes you have to wear there. YouTube and some reviewer decided that it was inappropriate for their experts. Could you imagine if that, if we put that video up and somebody said, if YouTube decided it was offensive, then you could be criminally charged? That's what these people who say the First Amendment um, is outdated and uh, shouldn't be around any longer. Now, does the First Amendment give you the right to say anything you want? Absolutely not. You can't yell fire in a crowded theater. It's going to incite a panic, okay? You can't go threatening people directly, all right? If you make up lies, you know, defamation, libel, slander, you can be um, sued. And just because you say something, the government's not going to throw you in jail for that, but you can have consequences for that. You could lose your job. People could ostracize you over YouTube, over the Twitter hemisphere or universe, whatever they call it these days. So you don't have a free pass. You can't say anything. There will be consequences. There'll be social consequences. But the government shouldn't be the ones imposing that. And to think that somebody would want somebody to go to prison for hate speech, what is the America coming to? That is the scariest thing that I have ever heard of. And the mere fact that we have got to this point is absolutely frightening. So everyone needs to get off of their political correctness bandwagon and stop feeling that everybody has a right not to be offended. Get over it. Get a life. Nobody has a right not to be offended. And maybe if you're offended by everything that somebody says, you need to do a little personal uh, evaluation to see if maybe it's not just them, but maybe it's you. Enough of that rant, but I read that and I was absolutely appalled. And I hope that everybody is appalled. The First Amendment protects people. Could you, I mean, the First Amendment, ladies and gentlemen, protects freedom of religion, the press, right to assemble. Could you imagine if we could not do that, we, haven't, we didn't have the right to petition and uh, the, the government for redress or say you couldn't have a protest march or um, you couldn't assemble and have a religious ceremony? Are you kidding me? 
unbelievable, ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable that the American educational system has come to this point that most people don't even understand or know what the First Amendment is. Maybe one of these days we're going to just read the entire Constitution so that everybody can listen to it out there because it should be required reading for every child from about the sixth grade on every year till they know it. That's my rant on that. Man, get rid of the First Amendment. Are you kidding me? Why not just get rid of all of them then? Really, people? The Constitution is like your local friendly criminal defense attorney. Everybody hates it until they need one. Man, jeez. All right, next on the docket. Boy, I had a rant there. My mouth is dry. Good thing I have my Crime Talk mug here. If you wish you had a Crime Talk mug, you can go to the link below. Order a mug. You can get it in black. You can get it in white. It, it, the little Look at that little thing right there. Look at that. They'll ship it to you and be there in a week or so, and then you can send me a picture with your mug, and we will put your mug shot up on our Instagram and Facebook pages. Just saying. All right. Next case on the docket. That's the death of Isaiah Muretta Golding. Now, Isaiah Muretta Golding is a young man, and he and his brother were probably up to no good, and people were looking for them, the police were looking for them. And he was running through basically a schoolyard, probably trying to get away. Ultimately, the police officers shoot Mr. Murrieta Golding, and like most police investigations, he comes out as cleared. Um, officers have a so much deference in what they do in police shootings, and basically if they feel that they are in fear, they are given a justification and pass for the shooting. Now, in Mr. Murrieta Golding's um, case, the police did their investigation, cleared the officer, and now the plaintiff's attorney for the family of Mr. Murrieta Golding has released the video. The video shows that Mr. Murrieta Golding was not reaching for his waistband for a firearm. In fact, they found no firearm on him. It appears as though he was simply trying to pull up his pants, and the officer shot him. He died three days later in the hospital. Obviously, this comes after a lot of high-profile officer shootings where the officers didn't get free passes, and I can think of a couple of examples in Texas right now, obviously the Amber Geiger case. Now, I understand, I appreciate the difficult job that the police officers do. I understand and appreciate that they are making split-second decisions. But as I have had to explain to many, many a client over the years, that everything gets complicated when you use your firearm. And you better be able to tell a jury why there were no other options other than shooting somebody. Now, the police officers had this video in their possession during their investigation and did not release it to the public until in the litigation process it was turned over. And this comes back to a bigger issue that needs to be addressed when these police shootings are investigated. They need to have complete transparency. They need to give the citizens a sense that everything is done out in the open they can explain rationally why the officer shooting was justified. And if it was, that's okay. I get it. There are bad, dangerous people out there in the world, and the officer should be able to protect themselves. But the citizens should have the same opportunity to protect themselves if there is an immediate threat to their life as well. Now, it was kind of a short week because of trial, scheduling issues, and just a real kind of a crazy week here. So as you may recall, we had the Dumb Criminal of the Week 
contestant yesterday who liked to engage in sexual conduct with stuffed animals in Target stores. Well, today we have an individual. The contestant today is unidentified because the police are still looking for him. But basically what it boils down to is a young woman was attempting to sell her iPhone in Pennsylvania. A young gentleman in his 20s responded. He apparently was of a slim build, blonde hair, and liked to show a big wad of cash that he had rubber band together in his pocket to show that he could, in fact, purchase the cell phone. The gentleman originally tried to purchase the cell phone with gift cards, which would be huge indication that the items are stolen because nobody trades in gift cards other than criminals who have stolen gift cards or stolen something and traded them for gift cards. When that failed, he attempted to pay with a one million dollar bill. Yeah. The problem with that is that there have only been 1,000 and 10th hour denomination bills, and those were discontinued in 1928 and 1946, respectively. So not only is this person a poor criminal, he's just stupid. So now we are at that moment of truth. Who will get the dumb criminal of the week? Could it be Christopher Pinellas, who was arrested and charged for having sex in Target with a stuffed animal, specifically one Olaf from Frozen? Or is it our unidentified 20-year-old male flouting his $1 million bill? Hmm. Well, you know what we're going to do? Today, we're going to pick Christopher Pinellas. Yes, Christopher Pinellas, you are the lucky winner. And if you contact me and identify yourself as such, you will receive a Crime Talk mug, and I will personally send it to you and sign it as your prize for being the Dumb Criminal of the Week. Now, Chris, if you get this, just send me an email at scott at scottreich.com. And hey, while you're there, why don't you take a second and sign up for our weekly newsletter at scottreich.com. If you want to get some of that cool, cool merchandise, like a mug, you can go to the links below. Like I said, they'll make just, they'll make just about anything for you. You'll have it in a short amount of time, and then you can send us a mug shot. And please don't forget, if you would like, because you never know what moderator at Google could shut us down at any moment. You could join us on Patreon so that we can continue to bring you these videos and discussing issues. And hopefully we don't get demonetized like the United States Supreme Court. Thanks, Google. That's all we have for Crime Talk today. Have a great day. and We'll see you next week.